Okay, we're here with the man of the moment, Mr. Steve Wraith, ahead of his first show on the Fight Pass on February the 7th at Gates of Leisure Centre, Rising Stars. Steve Wraith, tell me about it. It's an exciting opportunity. Matchroom Boxing have uh, teamed up with our new company, Relentless Promotions, to, to stage Rising Stars. It goes out on the, the 7th of February on the Matchroom Fight Pass channel. And it's, uh, it's a, mag a magical opportunity for, for local fighters to showcase themselves in a, on, a, on a bigger stage. Um, we come off the back of you know, a successful show run by Lewis Pendleton and fighting Chance at Gateshead where local TV station Made in Tyne and Weir covered it. And I think we, we, we've got a feel for what you know, the night's going to be like. You know, cameramen, commentators, and just had a, a more professional and a, a, a different feel to it. But I think it creates a buzz as well, it though, does, doesn't it? It does, yeah, because you know, ultimately, you know, the fighters are what everybody's there to see. But I think when you have a couple of ex-professionals or you know, a couple of faces in the crowd, it, it just makes the, the thirty pound movies that people have spent on that ticket that little bit more worthwhile. So it's yeah. uh, so it's an exciting After the thing. experience. Oh, look, 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 who's there? Yeah. And I've seen, I've seen such and such, and got before it will take and with. I've them. seen Phil Lindsay. Well, exactly. There's always something though, isn't there? <laughs> so, obviously this is the first one of the year, 2015. Yeah. What are the plans for 2015? Still at the planning stage, because obviously we're reliant really on um, you know, what Matchroom want to do. We've uh, been you know, lucky enough to, to get this show and get it early, um, which is which had its downside, because obviously a lot of fighters don't want to fight this early in the year. Uh, coming off the back of Christmas, people are struggling to, to, to pay for things, people are paying back on credit cards. And it's a bit of a struggle to, to, to sell tickets, I would imagine, for fighters. But, but for us, this is the date we were given. We had the opportunity of maybe going out slightly later in the year um, with our first one, but we thought going out early was, was the right thing to do and, and showcasing the young talent was the way to do it. So we're happy with what we've got. It would be nice to have a few more fights on the card, but what will be, will be. And if we can get uh, you know Jeff Saunders and on the bill and beat the clock with the medicals and the scan etc we'll have him topping the bill and i think six fights is more than enough for, for a professional show but um moving forward yeah we're, we're hoping to link up um more and more with fighting chance um i've got no intentions of opening a gym up uh, and and i've got no intention of taking a trainer getting a trainer's license um, and i like working with lewis pendleton and ronnie road fighting chance and you know we've been lucky enough to, to to build up this relationship with them over the last 12 months and I think that's something which we can cement in 2015 and it can go on and, and really do well with it. So the plan is to, is to work with them a lot more, to get another show on maybe in May or June, um, which again could be a fight pass show. Obviously we've put together the undercard for the 4th of April at the Metro Radio Arena for Eddie. So what happens after that, um, you know, is it, still very much up in the air. But having discussions with the likes of Mal Gates and, and Peter Cope, etc., about what they want to do with fighters is also important. And you know, there's there's other promoters in the northeast who are putting shows on as well. So it's a it's a it's a you know it's a game we're all playing. We've all got to find out who wants to fight when. And obviously, depending on what happens on this show and and, and on Phil's show on the on the 8th of March, yeah. um, very much decides on where people go with Northern Area titles and things like that. So, but exciting times for boxing fans. Well, that's the thing, there's so much talent coming through within the region now in terms of like local title fights. The, these maybe won at each weight a few years ago where there was they didn't have anybody to fight where with the crop that's coming through there now and the local derbies really do put a little like, Lee Moore and Craig Dixon at the end of last year fantastic fight and I think that local pride just brings that bit more out of them. No I would agree with you I mean that was certainly the fight of the year there's no doubt about it I think it just shaded Anthony Nelson against Broadbent I think, yeah. because of its local its local characteristics you know and, and you know two great warriors you know two so topsy-turvy as well tacticians, wasn't it? You know, we were both ringside and it was just the, the fight everybody wanted to you know be at and it was great uh, but yeah you're right I mean there's, there's some potentially great matchups you know and um, you know I think you know we will be able to to add to that when we have a few you know, new faces appearing on Tyneside over the next couple of months. There's, there's a couple of amateurs who are ready to turn pro, obviously Jeff Saunders is one of them. There's one or two others who are who are ready now to turn and I think the key for me was really going out and speaking to the amateur clubs, which yeah. I did in you know the early part of this month and just saying to them, look, this is what my game plan is. Um, do you want to be part of it? And I think you know there is a there is a feel good factor um, amongst the amateurs about the pro game at the moment. I think they're all very interested in, in what we've got to offer. And 
that's where the ticket ticket idea came in with regards to giving cheaper tickets to amateur clubs and allowing them to keep 50% of the sales. It's uh, it's not a gimmick, it's not a marketing gimmick, it's a genuine um, reach out from a professional boxing promoter to the amateur scene and saying, let's build up a relationship here which can benefit you and us. Well, I've always found the amateur side and the pro side, it's, it's like two separate strains that the, you know, the, the, there's two different sets of fans that will go to one and then the other, and it doesn't need to be that way. Collectively, they can obviously do so much more together, and it's it's not like just a pipeline. But in terms of the majority of professionals, su successful professionals have had successful amateur careers before that, so it is the natural progression. And now with there being so many more pro shows up here now, and so many pros actually doing well, the publicity they're getting on the back of that, it surely is enticing more of the amateur people who may be thinking about turning over what they have actually got to go into. There's going to be 200 fans there uh, who we'll have brought in via this deal. You know, so the promotion um, obviously has gone well It's then. gone well, yeah. I mean, we've had a uh, great uptake from Ashington, from New Biggin, from um, Newcastle, from Gateshead. Um, you know, we have a few tickets left, I think 40 tickets left, but, you know, they will go. We've already had, you know, speaking to Lewis today, more interest in them. And, you know, the deal's only been on the table for the last three or four days. And with minimal publicity, it's going to get more today. So 200 bums on seats with people who probably haven't been to a pro show before. So you know, it, 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 it's, it's exciting times and you'd like to think a lot of them are youngsters and it's akin to, you know, maybe he's been a young football fan and, and, and going and watching, you know, Kevin Keegan fly yeah. off in a helicopter like I did in 1984. It, I was there. It, it, has, <laughs> it, gets you, it gets you, doesn't it? It gets it does, you, it yeah. you. And that was the hook that made me become a football fan, not just a Newcastle fan, a football fan. And it's similar with boxing. If you have a youngster from Granger Park or Forest Hall um, or New Biggin or Ashton sitting, sitting in, in the stand um, and in the seats, you know, watching this show on the 7th of February and they see John Lewis Dickinson or they see Travis Dickinson or they see Bradley Saunders easily recognisable faces who they've seen on, on the television um, they'll get that same kind of feel that you know these people aren't untouchable then and suddenly you get that within you as a child you go I want to be part of this and I think the whole pizzazz that Matchroom will bring to this is you know they set the lights up they bring the sound they bring the, the smoke machine they set up the rampways they they set everything up it's it's very much a, a relentless promotion show but it's a Matchroom production because they they want it yeah. to look good on their channel um, on, on Fight Pass I think um, you know this is going to bring it to a, a different level for us and it's great it's, it's a work in progress as they will readily admit but it's a one which is going in the right direction and what sort of fights, obviously, you're looking at hopefully Jeff Saunders, what, uh, what do you think the chances are at this stage of Jeff actually appearing on the show? It's 50-50 it's at the moment, um, you know, we can't announce him, we can't promote yeah. him, uh, because obviously, you know, he's been given permission to turn pro by the Northern Area Council, uh, now Matthew Macklin is, uh, is busy pushing him uh, towards his medical and his scan, which will happen tomorrow. Um, once that's done, um, you know, he's already had um, various injections that he needs as well, then ultimately that's, it's, it's a paper chase becomes the paperwork getting to the border control, the border control notifying the Northern Area Council and the Northern Area Council then hopefully giving us permission to put Jeff top of the bill. Everyone's fully aware of what we want to do and why we want to do it. Uh, no one has any objections, it's just dotting the I's and yeah, crossing the T's. And within a, a time frame sort of thing. Yeah. Well speaking of time frames, I know you've got to go there somewhere very soon. So Steve, I'll catch you before the show but all the very yeah. best mate. Good to see you, thanks Cheers. very much.